Right now we're going to be setting up Heroku to work with our static files. Because if you remember back to the last one, we stopped with our admin having no CSS or images or anything like that in there. So what we need to do is set up Heroku to allow those things to come through. Now, of course, working locally, it might show up, it might not. But the main thing here is we want to make sure Heroku actually works for that stuff. Now, I also want to note that long term, I would use something like Amazon Web Services and not Heroku to actually serve our static files because it helps a lot with speed. So um, in this case, I'm going to just go through the guide that is the installation guide for Heroku itself or the actual deployment guide on our GitHub. So if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see this Heroku and Django deployment guide and that will take you he um, here, which eventually you'll wanna scroll down all the way to the bottom to the setup static files. Now everything above it is all the things that we've already done. Um, so keep that in mind when you're going through this. Now what I'm gonna do is just install white noise. So pip install white noise and white noise is now installed. And then we'll do pip freeze into requirements.txt. White, white noise is needed so Heroku can run our static files. So inside of middleware, we're gonna go ahead and copy this. And we're gonna go into our production file, scroll down to our middleware, and right below security, we're gonna put this in here. Now this is slightly different than what we've seen before with white noise. Um, so just keep that in mind if you've worked with white noise before. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just copy all of the stuff below it and go back into my production file and scroll all the way to the bottom and paste it in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. And I wanna make a few notes here. Number one, we need a static folder. So where our local static files are going to exist. And then we need static root and media root folders to where our live static files will exist and then our live uploaded files would exist. Um, so to do this, we have to actually create them locally and put something in it. So I'm gonna make inside of SRC, I'm gonna make a new folder in here called static. It's going off of this parameter right here. And then inside of static, I'm just gonna make a blank main.css file here. And we might put in something like body color equals to 000. You might just do something like that to make sure that there's a file in there so that folder is tracked. So right now, if I do get status, um, I see that that folder is being tracked. If I didn't have a file in there, it might not be tracked. Um, this actually reminds me, I need to add the updates for the requirements. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy just that one file and do git commit updated requirements for static. And that's another way to do that. Okay, so now if I do git status, I see that only my production and the static folders there. I also want my live static files here. I'm gonna call these just uh, live static, not just live static files. I don't need that files portion there. So I'll go ahead and come into SRC, new folder, live static. Inside of here, two new folders, one being static dash root, and one being, oops, not file, but one being media dash root. And just like with our static files, we might need to actually update these uh, accordingly, but right now I don't need to do that. I'm actually gonna go ahead and copy this and then go into my local files, scroll to the very bottom. Inside a local, you might not already have this, but if you do, that's okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paste in those things. So I've got live static and static root. I'm gonna get rid of the static files storage. I don't actually want that in here. And I'm also gonna get rid of this comment there. I'll go ahead and save this, and I'm gonna do the same thing on my base file uh, that's on local. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that, scroll to the very bottom again, and paste that in here. Okay, so now that we've got this on local, I can actually run collect static on local, so python manage.py collect static, and we say yes. Um, I'm gonna scroll back up to show you one thing that I just kinda overlooked, and this right here. So this is the folder that it's actually going into, which is what we set up right here. So we've got live static and then static root. So inside of static root, we actually have some static files in here. Now, media root doesn't have any. So if I went to get status now, I see that I have live static, but I actually don't have media root in here. Um, so I'm just gonna add in a new blank file in here and just call it um, text or uh, blank.txt. 
and I'll just say some text. This actually doesn't matter. Um, get status. So that will actually bring in that media route. Now this has everything to do with when we go live to ensure that those things actually exist. Now, if you were using Amazon Web Services S3 for your static files, you wouldn't even have to think about that. But that's something we don't need to worry about right now. Instead, what I'll do is get status, get add, dash dash all, get commit, added static files, and then get push Heroku master, press enter. I also might wanna activate my static file collect or collect static. Um, back to being zero, so I want to re-enable it, and I'll do that after this is run. Okay, so it looks like everything's working okay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and disable collect static. So now it will actually run collect static when we deploy it. This is an optional thing. It does take a little bit longer if you run collect static, just keep that in mind. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and do Heroku local web. And let's go ahead and look at that. This is the URL, of course. We refresh, looks like that's looking okay. Go into the admin, that is also looking okay there. So now let's go ahead and just do Heroku open. And this should bring us to our project, it is. And we go into admin, and there we go. So I actually have my static files now working um, related to this project. Okay, cool. So that is just some slight changes to what's in Try Django 1.10 for deploying on Heroku. The guide itself is updated and working accordingly. One last thing you might want to do is actually set up your Gmail stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy these things right here. And I'm going to paste them in each one of my settings file right below allowed hosts. I'm going to go ahead and copy that in each one. And there we go. Um, so notice that you wanna put your, this is for Gmail in particular. So you'd wanna put your Gmail email in there. Um, and you also wanna make sure that you have your admins in there. This is actually really good for testing 500 errors. If you ever see a 500 error, this will actually send you an email assuming that these are set up correctly. Now I don't actually have them set up correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment it out at least on production. Later, I'll worry about actually setting up the email itself. Um, but I do like to have these settings in there um, for whenever we need to update those themselves. And do keep in mind that we have some security issues that you might need to do for Gmail itself on your own Gmail address. Um, there are other email services that you can use for this instead of Gmail. Basically, what you'll need is the host user password and the port and whether or not you need to use TLS. Those services, you can contact them directly and they will likely give you those settings um, itself. I mean, you can definitely use this on all sorts of things and to ensure that, that you can actually have email on your own app. Okay, so that's it for the static files and actually setting this thing up. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is actually add this custom domain. So if you wanna go ahead and skip ahead, you can totally do that on your own with this, but I'm gonna do it specifically for this app um, so if you have any questions on that, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.